hello. My name is Dan Meyer and I'm an instructor with Skyline Advanced Technology Services and I'd like to take a few moments to share with you how within Uni Unified Contact Center Enterprise uh, you, in a business application how you could use precision routing. Precision routing, some people even call it precision queuing because it can affect all manners of how we can select an agent in our contact center. Okay, let's get started. I like to share this to uh, give some business reasons why you may want to do it. To understand that a little bit further, let's contrast uh, precision routing to skills-based routing. Let's take an example of 20 agents. All 20 agents are in a skill group. Uh, all 20 are considered equal in ability. Uh, that's what we've always had uh, uh, from a business sense. This makes a lot of sense if they truly are equal. <laughs> Uh, there are also several different ways you can select an agent, but by far the most popular is the longest available agent. Uh, so truly all 20 are considered equal in this kind of scenario. Let's take the same 20 though and let's look, in, look at them in a little bit different manner. If we look from a precision routing perspective to those same 20 agents, first of all, each agent needs to be assigned to an appropriate attribute. Uh, uh, they can be assigned to multiple attributes. Uh, let's give an example that uh, this is an insurance company uh, and they sell more than one type of insurance. Uh, each one of those could be an attribute. Uh, and then you actually take uh, Mary, George, and Steve and you assign them uh, to what attributes they're able to do. Now that's one thing to assign them to an attribute. Then the next part is we can add a proficiency associated with each attribute. So Mary could be really good at boating insurance. We give her an eight, but car insurance a three. So I think you can see between the attributes and the proficiencies assigned to the agents, uh, we can now narrow it down uh, by business rules, what's the best agent to take the call. Now, I have a couple of examples here. I call them Think Pyramid. Uh, as to how we can make this the selection process. So if the pyramid is right side up in the first example, we're going to show uh, that we have three different layers of that pyramid uh, uh, for this example. Uh, in precision routing, you can have a maximum of 10. Uh, but the same principle applies whatever the number of layers that you're using. So let's say, let's talk about a different industry now. Let's say this is a cruise line. Uh, and the agents are answering calls uh, from, uh, uh, from crews, uh, uh, people that have already signed up, uh, but they're asking about the crews. Uh, maybe you've advertised a toll-free number uh, for your platinum cru uh, cruisers, ones that have been on, pick an example, 10, 15 cruises, they become platinum, uh, assign them uh, to that elite status. Uh, you want to give them to your subject matter experts. And you could then say either they're handling the cruisers the most efficient way or maybe even they're at best at upgrading cruisers to get them to sign up for excursion packages, meal packages, uh, drink packages, whatever. Uh, you want to uh, get that call to one of those three subject matter experts. Now, if they're busy, you don't want to sit there and wait forever. We're going to say we're going to wait 20 seconds. If none of those three become available in that 20 seconds, we can now look at our OKs. The OKs are just like we say. They're not as good as subject matter experts, but they're OK. Uh, now we're targeting. If any one of those seven becomes available, we would immediately deliver. Uh, if none of them are available, we're not only looking at the seven, we're looking at all ten. So we're still looking at the original three subject matter experts. We're looking at the seven OKs for a total of 10. Uh, and here in this step, maybe we wait 30 seconds. Any one of those that becomes available before that 30 seconds expires, we immediately deliver the call. But if the 30 seconds expires, then we go down and look at our last resorts. There's the last 10 of those 20 agents. Uh, they're our last resorts. And when we get into this last uh, step, uh, we need to wait forever. Uh, we can't, uh, no time uh, that we can put. 
Now let's go back up to how we designate these different levels. Again, I shared with you proficiencies. So here, maybe in this business world, we decided a 8, 9, or 10 would be a subject matter expert. Now, if uh, we truly think all 8, 9s, and 10s are close enough to being those subject matter experts, maybe if, if more than one of them is available, we look for the longest available that we deliver it to. There's three different ways you can look, longest available, least proficient, or most proficient. So let's look here. We're going to look at the longest available at this level. Now, let's go one other scenario. What if none of the three are even logged in? Well, we could put a consider if that we don't wait the 20 seconds, we immediately drop down to the next level. So those consider ifs, combination of uh, the proficiency and their consider if uh, and how we want to route to them, then we can actually look at our next level. So now we're looking at the OKs. Five, six, and seven, maybe there's enough differences there. We say we want it to go to the most proficient. We we'll deliver it to the fives uh, and get all the fives busy. Uh, and then uh, once all the fives are busy, uh, we'll deliver to the sixes. And when the fives and sixes are busy, we deliver to the sevens. And when all of them are busy, then that's where we can wait the 30 seconds before we go to the next level. We can also put a consider if, if none of those sevens are logged in, don't even wait the 30 seconds. Go right on down to the last resorts. Now, the last resorts, they have a proficiency of one, two, three, four. Remember, in this last level, there can be no consider ifs. There can be no waits. In theory here, now all 20, we're waiting. Uh, forever at this uh, level for one of them to become available. Uh, now, you may say, well, what's the big uh, deal of proficiency one, two, three, four in this example? Well, maybe let's say proficiency one is the default level you, when you come out of uh, uh, new agent training. Okay, They come out at a, as a one unless the uh, training supervisor said, you know, Jennifer did a really good job. Uh, uh, she's going to come out as a two. Uh, or maybe even George had already worked in a contact center before, and he picked this up really good. It was easy pleasing. He's coming out as a three. So you have that flexibility. Now, that's if the pyramid is right side up. What if we turn the pyramid upside down? Upside down example now could be a completely different toll-free number that people are dialing in. This could be no status. They're just a general uh, uh, customer service number uh, that they're calling in. We'll then put the same 20 agents out there, but we, we target the last resorts first. Uh, and we actually look there again if none are available in 20 seconds. We go to the next level. And if we look at the least proficient, we're going to get all the ones busy before we look at two, three, four. We get all ones and twos busy before we look at three and four. So I think you see here, by doing this way, we're making sure that the ones that need to be in front of the customer, build their confidence, get better at it, uh, we're going to hit them with a lot more calls. Uh, and then uh, the hope is, uh, supervisors analyze, and they start moving up through those uh, proficiency levels. But if we go the 20 seconds, they're not available. Uh, then we still go down to our seven OKs. Now we're looking at 17 of them, uh, and now we're waiting 30 seconds if none of them are available. Uh, but if some of them are available, now we can still look at the least proficient, uh, and we would get uh, we would get give it to a five before we would a six or a seven. We give it to a five or a six before we would a seven. I think you see the principle. And again, now out of 17 of them, we'll wait 30 seconds before we go. And if none of them are even logged in, we can catch, capture that with consider if, immediately go to our SMEs. So again, our SMEs are that last level. We could still do those as least proficient in this. Remember I shared before when the pyramid was right side up, we said longest available. Here, we still do the least proficient. So we'll get uh, a call to 8 before 9. Uh, we'll get 8 and 9 before we go to 10. Whether the pyramid is right side up or upside down, we can actually target those agents. Uh, this was an example where we had two different toll-free numbers 
completely two different ways of targeting those 20 agents. You could have them independent. You could have a number just for those subject matter experts, those SMEs, uh, and you're only going to the others if you need to. Or you can have it just this way, upside down as well. It's You have so much flexibility in these routing decisions. And again, this is just three layers. Remember, you can have up to 10 layers. So hopefully this is giving you some thoughts that you can have uh, about uh, uh, precision routing. Uh, are there any questions? We have been using the skill groups for so many years that I'm really concerned uh, how we could implement this method. Uh, let me share with you a way that you could potentially do this. Now, notice down here at the bottom, I have a scale of time. So you can do what I'm getting ready to share with over time. It's as you're comfortable. Uh, and you can start out on day one. Uh, on paper, though, you take all of your agents and their proficiency level for the different ones. But then in our routing rules, when we're building our precision routing, we literally build everybody as a proficiency five. We route the calls for the longest available agent. You combine that all of them are looked at equally, and you're looking for the longest available agent. So you're still doing, at this point, you're doing skills-based routing. Then you say, OK, let's start phasing this in. Now we go in and we start changing some of our agents. Some of them become sixes. Some of them become fours, and a lot are still fives. I go a little bit further, some become sevens, some become threes. Uh, and we're looking at uh, Cisco Unified Intelligence Center, which is our reporting application. They have uh, uh, skills-based routing reports that you can look at, plus many of the stock reports have precision routing basis that we can have so you can actually get statistics along with it and to make sure you're comfortable. So you can go further and further, uh, or you can even back away. So let's, let's, let's back off from this a little bit. Let's wait and see. If we do it now, we're ready to try it again if the reports look good. So it's a comfort level. You don't have to take it as a flash cut. We're doing skills-based routing on a Tuesday, and then Wednesday we're doing precision routing. You could phase it in over a period of time uh, uh, so that the comfort level uh, exists for everybody. Well, I hope you got something from that. You can probably see how precision routing can have a profound effect in our modern day contact center and how to select not only an agent, the best agent to deliver a call to.